Hi everyone, I'm Tim from Classic Register. Today we're going to be having a look at the Australian Mark I Morris Cooper S. These cars were built from 1965 to 1969 and they're the most numerous of the Australian Cooper S's, just under 5,000 produced and out of a total of about 7,500 Australian Cooper S's. This particular car we got from South Australia and it's got a few little modifications and things which we'll point out as we go around the car, but it's sort of an example, a typical example of what you'd find if you were um, if you were purchasing an unrestored Mark One Cooper S today. So the purpose of this video is to go through the various features of the car that you should be looking for if you're wanting to purchase one. And we're going to start off with mechanical features. Um, we're going to look at obviously the important um, chassis and, uh, and engine numbers for the car, various interior features, etc. So we'll start off round at the engine bay and go from there. Okay, now into the most important part of the car in the engine bay here. Here you're going to have your engine number, your chassis and body numbers, and a whole bunch of important mechanical features that you need to look for, which are unique to the Morris Cooper S. Now the engine in this car is not an original engine. Unfortunately, it was uh, the original engine was blown up when the car was raced. We do have an original engine block to replace this one. All other features on this motor, thankfully, are the original features which have been refitted to this block and we'll be able to put all those bits together later on. So what I'll get you to do is come a little bit closer and we'll have a look at each of these individual features and start going through what you need to look for. All right, moving into the engine bay of the car now, and the first thing I want to look at is the chassis plate. The chassis plate has the Mark I Morris Cooper S um, chassis prefix on it of YKG2S2, which you can see at the top. You'll then have the car number underneath that, and underneath that you'll have the engine number prefix of 9FSAY with the unique engine number next to it. You also have the vehicle's um, body colour listed. In this case, it's burgundy red on toga white and you can obviously see the original paint on the bulkhead here. At some point the car has been painted uh, blue over the top, unfortunately. Um, now another important point is you need to look to make sure that the car number, the four digit car number there, is also stamped into the bulkhead or the firewall of the car just underneath the chassis plate. They should be matching. The next thing you'll want to check, and we'll move over there in a second, is the engine number that's listed here to make sure that it matches what's on this plate in the engine block. So we'll move over there and have a look at those other numbers now. Okay, moving on to the engine number now. Now, as I mentioned, on the chassis plate, the unique engine number for the car is listed there that importantly should match in a fully original car to the number stamped at the top of the block just above the generator here on the Mark I Cooper S. Now as I mentioned before this particular engine is not original to the car, it's not even a Cooper S engine. We do have an original Cooper S block that we want to put in and we'll show you an example of that stamping a bit later. Alright, coming over to the other side of the engine bay now and we're looking at on top of the radiator shroud here the Mark I Cooper S body number. You'll have M206 and then a four digit body number next to that. Now the locations of the stampings vary on, on each car in terms of their precise location on that shroud. We've seen many examples of different positions. But the important thing about the body number is that it's 500 less than the car number or approximately 500 less than the car number. We've seen some examples of 501, we've even seen examples up to 505, 510 out. Uh, these were internal numbers, they weren't perfectly stamped into the, into the radiator shroud, so uh, you might get some numbers that are more clear than others, uh, but it's very important to confirm that you've got that number 500 less than the car number that we saw stamped on the bulkhead and on the chassis plate that we previously showed you. Alright, so as I showed you in the engine bay just earlier, we didn't have the correct engine in the car. I do have the correct type of block for the car with the correct prefix, although the number is not original and matching to the chassis plate. Now the number you're looking for, and the code you're looking for that prefixes the number, is 9FSAY. That's stamped on top of the block, just below the head and above where the generator sits, as we showed you inside the engine bay just then. This number, of course, does not match our chassis plate, but it's very close, and it's from the same year of the car, so it'll be suitable to put in the car in future. Okay, moving on to some of the mechanical features of these cars. 
Now you can look in more detail on our written identification guide for the very specific um, descriptions of these items. But first of all, you want to make sure the car has hydroelastic suspension. You'll have the lines coming up through the tops of the subframe at either side of the engine bay. You'll have twin one and a quarter uh, SU carburetors. On some police cars, they're fitted with one and a half inch SU carburetors. So there's a slight change there, and again, there's more details on the written guide. You've got your metal Lockheed brake and clutch fluid. You've got your Lockheed brake booster. And at the front of the engine here, you obviously have the generator based on the Mark 1's era. And behind the grill, a bit hard to see from here, you've got the oil cooler. But we've got, again, some images and descriptions of those on the written guide. Moving on to some of the external features of the car now. The Mark 1 Cooper has had the small S badge above the Morris badge. The Mark 2 moved to the round badge on the front of the hood. Now it's a bit difficult for me to explain the bumpers, seeing as this car has none, but they had small overriders and nerf bars in each corner. Coming around the side of the car now, just looking at the wheels. These wheels had nine ventilation holes, the Cooper S wheel. Uh, they were 4.5 inch by 10 inch in size and they were painted a silver birch. The British cars were, were often painted white, which is a bit different to the Australian design. Now, for the experts watching, you'll see that these wheels are slightly inside the guard, which is not normal for the Cooper S. Um, usually they sort of come out to here, a bit outside the guards, and the reason for that is that this car is meant to be fitted with disc brakes. This car currently isn't. It's got drum brakes on it, which is the reason these wheels are sitting a bit in. Uh, now, the Mark I was never fitted factory with flares, it's been said that at some dealerships they were fitted with flares, I've heard in South Australia often that happened. And many people obviously make that modification with the flare support panels on the car, but most of the Mark 1s were not fitted with flares. Coming further down the side of the car and around the back, you can obviously see the right hand tank which was standard on all Australian Cooper S cars. For the experts that are watching you'll notice there's a problem here. We have the later model tail lights. We've got to buy some panels and put the originals back in. Uh, the previous owner explained to us that sometime during the 1970s um, these tail lights were changed over because it was the thing to do to make the car look more modern. It's a bit of a shame but we'll have to change them back. They've also filled in the boot lid here and got rid of the number plate flap. Uh, but we'll go around now and have a look inside the boot and inside of the interior features of the car and go through those elements. Okay, just a few extra features to go through before we go and show you inside the boot. The Cooper S will have the small S badge above the Morris Cooper badge. And like the front bumper bars, the rear bump has also had overriders and corner nerf bars at each side. Okay, going inside the boot now. And having a look on the back of the boot lid here, the Cooper S was always fitted with a boot backing board as they called it, which was fitted with trim washers or fixed with trim washers to the back of the boot lid. We have a boot board in the middle sitting between the Cooper S twin tanks. I'll take this boot board out just so we can see a bit better inside and have a look at the other features in there. So the right hand tank is a unique tank. It's not the same design as the left tank. Some people do try and flip them around and put them in but it doesn't really work. As you can see there's an angle here that the tank makes to avoid the battery. Now that boot board that I just took out is sitting on four supports there. You've got two at the front here and two up against the bulkhead. Now looking further inside, and this is an essential feature of the Cooper S, you'll have these tags, which you'll have two on either side behind the tanks for the fuel vapor pipes, and you'll have three going across the top of the bulkhead. Another feature which is unique and may be hard to see depending if the car's been restored, the Cooper S was fitted with trim underneath the parcel shelf. And often you'll see remnants of this, this sort of um, fabric that might be still there if the car hasn't been restored. Sometimes it's not replaced in restoration and it's very hard to see, but on an original car you should be able to see some remnants of the fabric that was stuck under there. Okay, there are a few other features uh, that we can't see here. In the subframe there's an electronic fuel pump. We can see the breather valve for that or the hole which comes under the seat in the interior. So we'll move into the interior now and show you some of the unique features there. Right, having a look at the interior features here, and as we mentioned when we were looking inside the boot lid, there's an electronic SU fuel pump that sits at the front of the rear subframe. And inside the interior here, you'll be able to see a hole for the breather valve for that pump. So to find it, you need to look under the rear seat, 
the left rear seat and you'll see this panel which is slightly raised from the other two panels under that seat. At the top left of that panel, facing the front of the car, you'll see the hole for the breather valve. Now that's unique to the Cooper S. Coming out and looking at the rest of the interior, this car originally was fitted with red vinyl seats. At some stage in the car's history, someone has painted over the rest of the interior panels in a black colour. We'll try and undo that in future uh, to bring it back to its original. But the cars are available with, in various interior colours. The Cooper S was not fitted with, uh, with rear seat belts. Originally only front seat belts, which you can see here. So coming into the front of the car and having a look at some of the dashboard features, all of the Cooper S cars have the top dash trimmed with vinyl. So you can see this black vinyl here, that was original and standard and unique to the Cooper S. Also unique and original is this flat non-vented top um, ashtray. Looking down here we've got the 120 mile an hour dash. Now the only thing that's wrong here is that this shroud is actually from a Mark II. The original Mark I shroud had four screws which you'd see in the face and we've got an original face to put on that. Looking down here at the heater, the Mark I Cooper S were always fitted with a heater. The Deluxe was also fitted with the same heater as an option, but the Cooper S had it standard. This is the metal bodied Mark I original heater, single lever. It's slightly different design and looks certainly different to that of the Mark II. Some early Mark II cars were fitted with this heater, but this is the correct heater for the Mark I. Now the next thing, which may be a bit difficult to see with the light here, one difference with the Cooper S is that the heater support brackets or the brackets or hooks that hold the heater are actually spot welded, spot welded into the rear of the bulkhead. Many other models had them riveted. So that's an important difference that you need to look for if you're buying a Cooper S. Make sure that's welded in. In terms of the steering wheel, the standard steering wheel applied. This is obviously a different one for images of that you can have a look at the images we have on the written ID guide, as well as other more specific items, including the carpet types, trim types, etc. This has been a brief guide to the Australian Mark I Cooper S. If you want further details on all the intricate features of these cars, including the interior features, external features, and more details about the chassis numbers and all the colours and trim codes available, have a look at our link to the written guide, which appears on screen now. Thanks very much for watching.